Hello, I'm Antonio Mora. This is the News and News.com Day and Brief. Today's top stories in four minutes. It's Thursday, September 13th at about 6.30 p.m. I've spent far too many days in my life chasing hurricanes, covering hurricanes, living through hurricanes, and waiting for power to return after hurricanes. The one constant in all those storms is that one could count on the worst of the weather to pass by quickly, usually in a few hours. That will not be the case with the very slow-moving Florence, and that makes it all the more dangerous. Well, the storm has, at this writing, weakened to a Category 2. Forecasts of its storm surge remain about the same. People don't realize that only about a foot of storm surge can sweep your car off the road. So imagine what it could do to you. If you wait until you start seeing the water, it's probably too late to get away. And even if you can get to a higher floor, good luck, because with a storm surge like Florence's, your house may not remain standing. So, if you're in an area threatened by storm surge, the only good advice is to get the hell out way before the surge pays you a visit. Of course, if storm surge doesn't get you, the winds could. While Florence is no longer a major hurricane, even a tropical storm can be bad. And imagine being in a house that is getting pounded by powerful winds for two days. It could be even worse if the storm generates a tornado in your neighborhood. Then there are the rains. Florence could bring some areas eight months of precipitation in a couple of days, so flash floods and river flooding will be problems. Also, the aftermath can be terrible without power in the late summer heat, especially for the elderly and for those who didn't stock up on medicines that may not be available. So when I hear all those brave folks on TV saying they're going to ride out a storm, especially in areas threatened by storm surge, all I can think of is that their pictures should be in the dictionary next to the word foolhardy. And I'm being nice. They should be next to far more obnoxious words. Meanwhile, President Trump, it's not all about you. Even if an obsessed media makes you feel it is, it's not. It's about the millions of people who face danger and could have their lives destroyed by this storm. So please stop telling us how you're getting accolades about your storm response hours before anything has happened. Stop bragging about how ready you are. Tell us how you prepared and inform people about what help is available to them. If you're worried about proving your leadership, why raise expectations about preparedness? You're guaranteed not to look good when people spend days and weeks without power or a hot meal, and people will. Also, why generate more controversy by rejecting the recent study that showed Hurricane Maria caused some 3,000 deaths in Puerto Rico? Why look petty? Why open yourself to backlash even from some of your strongest supporters? Why look like you care more about yourself than people who died and whose families suffered? This was not the time, with another storm threatening the United States, to accuse Democrats of inflating Maria's death toll. However, Trump has a point not well articulated at all, that his critics are using Maria as a cudgel, sometimes unfairly. I've been listening today to anchors, politicians, and pundits saying in no uncertain terms that Maria was the deadliest storm in recent U.S. history. Unfortunately, that puts us again into lies, damn lies, and statistics territory. The accepted estimates of fatalities due to Katrina usually look at the month that followed the storm. The recent estimate of Maria deaths looked at what it called excess deaths over six months that might be appropriate because Maria's long-term consequences, especially the length of power outages, were in some ways worse than Katrina's. But until we have an accepted method of estimating fatalities, it's only fair to at least mention that we may be comparing apples to oranges. Still, again, why does the president create controversy when what is believed to be a once-in-a-lifetime storm for the Carolinas is about to hit? In our daily alternate universe segment, The Great Divide Between Conservative and Liberal Media, it's a repeat of yesterday. Good luck finding coverage of Trump's controversial Maria comments on conservative websites and TV networks while it's excessively covered by liberal websites and networks. There's lots of other news updated around the clock seven days a week on newsandnews.com where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. Please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News and follow me on Twitter at Amora TV. I'll see you again tomorrow.